Welcome. This is the Cisco CCNA ENSA, also known as the Enterprise Networking Security and Automation course. This course focuses on the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is course 3 of 3. Welcome. In this lab, we are setting up OSPF v2 using all IPv4 addresses. We have four sections under the objectives. Configure the router IDs, configure the appropriate networks, configure the passive interfaces, and then verify OSPF configuration. So part one is pretty simple. We're going to be setting up our router IDs. We do that by logging into a router, getting to our global configuration, and at the global configuration, typing in our router OSPF whatever the uh, version of OSPF, uh, whatever our process ID is. Here we're using a process ID of 10. And then from there, we will be giving a router hyphen ID space router ID command. So for example, R1, get to our global configuration. We will do a router OSPF, we're doing a process ID 10. That's put us at a router subcommand. We will do router ID. Because we're on R1, the ID is 1.1.1.1. And that's it. That set up the ID for R1. Hop over to R2, do the exact same thing. Global configuration, do router. OSPF. Uh, again, process ID is the same across all of them. So you, if you fat finger this, it's not going to work. So it has to be router OSPF uh, 10 for each of them. Router ID. This is on router 2. Alright, let's get over to router 3, our last router. Get to global configuration. Config T. Router OSPF. Again, Process ID 10, we're doing router ID 3.3.3.3. All right, so part one is done. We've completed A and B, so we are good. So I'm going to scroll on down. Part two has three steps, configuring the network for OSPF. Configuring the network uh, using the interface addresses and a quad zero mask, and configuring OSPF routing on the router interfaces. Interesting thing here is OSPF will use wildcard masks. So when we go to program a network, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So on router one, this is going to be one of the networks. Here is the subnet mask. Again, the the wild card is the inverse of the subnet mask. So instead of it being 255.255.255.0, because that's slash 24 in dotted decimal form, it's actually going to be 0.0.0.255. .0 Again, it's the inverse. You look at the binary where all the ones are, they become zero. Where all the zeros are, they become one. If you need this explained in other ways, reach out to me. I've got a few other videos explaining wildcard masks. All right, so let's get back into part two, step one. All right, so how many LAN statements are required to configure OSPF on the networks attached to R3? R, sorry, on R1. R1 has three different networks, so we have three different network statements. The LAN attached, which will be this guy right here, is a slash 24 subnet. The wildcard is the inverse, again, the 0.0.0.255. Here we have a 255.255.255.252. The inverse of that would be 0.0.0.3. And I believe that was that one. So we've done these steps. So now let's get over to step 1A. We're going to configure the routing process on each router 
doing a network, then giving it an address, the wildcard, the area, and we have a single area, so we are going to be doing area just zero. So let's hop on R1. Uh, if you're not sitting at a subterminal for router, again, router OSPF process ID number 10 will get us here. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to scroll up here. We are doing these three networks. Again, the network addresses, not the IP addresses. So the first network will be network 192.168.10.0 space 0.0.0.255 area 0. We have a single area, that will be area 0, that all of these will be connected to. We have multi-area OSPF, but that's a later lab. Here we have a single area OSPF, that's why it's area 0. So that's the first network statement. The second one will be 10.1.1.0. Wildcard is uh, 0.0.0.3. Area 0. And then the last network, which is tied to serial 0 slash 1 slash 1. Network 10.1.1.4 with the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.3. Area 0. And again, we use the first usable as addresses for our assigning. That's how we know the network IDs are one less than what's shown here. That's why I was able to finish this chart. So that sets up this guy. On step 2, we're going to do the exact same thing for router 2. So again we're setting up router 2 using the commands with the address on the interfaces and quad 0 masks which we're basically meaning we're matching them 100%. Again underneath a router sub command if you're not there type router OSPF process ID 10 and that will take you there. So what does it mean by quad zero? Basically what we will do is I'm going to scroll up. I'm on R2. I'm looking at these three networks right here, these three. So I will do network. I'm going to do the first network, 192.168.20.0. And instead of doing a wild card, I have to step back a minute. I can't do the network ID because we aren't doing wildcards. We are actually doing quad zero, so we're matching 100% this information. So we're going to be sending out the 192.168.20.1 network. So we do quad zeros and we attach it to area zero. That will let us map out that address. Next, we do network. We do the next uh, network, which is 10.1.1.2. Again, quad zero, because that's what our lab is calling for. Area zero. And there we go. We do our last statement, which is serial zero slash one slash one. Network statement is network. 10.1.1.9 quad zero area zero so we've completed those three statements using our quad zero remember when it's a quad zero you use the IP address if we're doing wildcard math it will be the network IDs realistically for OSPF, you should be using wildcard masks at this stage. So that is quad zero. Step three, we're going to configure R3 using the required interfaces with OSPF. 
So here we will do IP OSPF process ID and we will give it a area ID. Notice the command is at a sub interface. So that is important to note. We have three interfaces and we'll be configuring these underneath those interfaces. So R3, we're going to be doing it off of those interfaces. So three different ways to do OSPF. All right, first interface, interface gig uh, ethernet zero slash zero slash zero. And again, the command is IP OSPF, the process ID, area zero. That basically will say broadcast whatever network is on this interface at to OSPF, process ID 10, and it's the area zero. So we have to do that for all three interfaces. So we did fast ethernet. Now we can do serial zero slash zero, sorry, serial zero slash one slash zero. Again, IP OSPF process ID of number 10 area zero. And let's do our last interface, which is interface serial zero slash one slash one. That will be IP OSPF process ID 10 area zero. So again, three different ways to set up network statements for letting other routers know what we are. Router one used wildcards, router two used our quad zero, router three we did it based off the interface. Again, router one using wildcards is typically the most appropriate for the CCNA level. All right, so we've done part two, steps one, two, and three. Now let's go ahead and part three, configure passive interfaces. Here, we're going to basically say, do not send router updates to our LAN. We only need to have it sent between our routers. So I'm gonna do R1 first. Underneath our router configuration. So again, if you're not sitting at a config router, the command would be router OSPF and whatever process ID. Here we're using 10. And we will issue the command IP OSPF 10. Oh, sorry, sorry. Looking at the wrong section. We're here, we are doing part three. We are not doing another uh, area. We're gonna be doing passive interfaces. So we do passive interfaces. And we are gonna be doing this out of the gig uh, interface. So gig zero slash zero slash zero. If you set passive interfaces on the serial interfaces, it will not send router updates out those interfaces. So be careful. Passive interfaces should only be set on interfaces facing the LAN. I'm gonna hop over to R2. Again, router subcommand. So we're gonna do passive interface. We're gonna be doing gig zero slash zero slash zero. And we're good there. Lastly, R3. R3, we configured it per interface. However, doesn't matter. The passive interfaces are done underneath the global router command. So we actually have to go back, do a router OSPF, I process ID of 10. And here we can do our passive interface gig zero slash zero slash zero. That basically says do not send router updates to our three LANs. So we can use the show command to verify the network 
and pass inter interfaces looking at the OSPF on each router. Alright, so on R1, exit, exit, show run. Again, here we did our wildcards. That is the first network statement with the wildcard and the remaining two network statements with the wildcard. We have our passive interface set and our router ID set, so we're good there. R2, we're going to do a show run as well. Show run. Router OSPF, we have our router ID, we have our passive interfaces. And we have our three network statements using our quad zero. That will work for now. Let's move over to R3. Again, we're going to do a show command. Show run. Here we have the OSPF underneath each interface. But also, under our router OSPF, we have our router ID and we have our passive interfaces. And that should be it for the lab. Completion 100%, so we should be good. You can click check results just to verify. Check results returned a great um, on each of them. You can check assessment items to go through, make sure everything is check marked. If uh, they're not, rewatch the video. I did cover everything on the configuration. Any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.